Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin, Friday, June 10th, 2016, and today I am going to get my talking head coding videos started again, beginning with doing something that I didn't think I was going to do, which is downloading Anaconda for my Macintosh desktop. So search on Anaconda, it's the first thing that comes up, it's a pretty popular um, set of packages that puts everything needed to do Python and a bunch of data science stuff uh, onto your Windows or Macintosh desktop. Here I will be downloading the Mac OS X 64-bit for Python 3.5, which has a lot to do with the reason I'm doing this, because I'll be porting Pipulate to Python 3.5. And I wanted a nice execution environment, which is better than what happens if you just go to the command line and uh, type Python. You actually get an environment here, this is 2.7, but it could just as well be 3, where you can, you know, set something uh, equal to a variable, hi equals hello world, and then you can print hi. And in this way you can test, you know, all sorts of Python things, uh, like, uh, you know, a range equals range uh, 10 and then take a look at a range so you can do all kinds of neat interactive things but when it gets up to defining functions you have to start remembering things like you know how far you indented um, well, of course def high we need to do at least an open close for it to support uh, parameters even if you don't give one and you know you uh, return the world. But you can imagine if you have a multi-line uh, function how this gets uh, complicated to keep track of. You hit enter twice to finish you know putting the function in memory. Uh, now you can invoke it or you can look at it as an object. Uh, but there's a much better environment out there that's been innovated which is really um, uh, called IPython or Jupyter Notebook, which you'll be seeing in me install on my, on my machine right now. So I downloaded this. It's sitting here in my download directory, so I'll just double click that. It's a .pkg, so that means it's going to start walking us through an installer, agree to all our licensing stuff. And this installs uh, quite a bit uh, onto your machine. Uh, so, I'm installing it just for me. I guess I could have done it for everybody. It's a personal preference and I guess security thing, uh, decision you make. So, um, my tendency is to want to do a pause here while it's doing it, the install, but I'll use it as a chance to uh, say a few words. Um, I like the methodology of creating a tiny little server running locally on the machine, uh, usually out of a command line console uh, with my own version of uh, Linux or my own version of Linux called Linux. You do it in a little uh, virtual machine running in QEMU on your desktop, but you can actually uh, surf to the services provided to it on uh, local host 8080 from your web browser or SSH into it through a command line terminal. And it's a fairly innovative way to work and essentially you have a box over here that's running the show. You've got a web browser over here that's connecting to that box and interacting with it. And Jupyter Notebook, previously known as IPython, uh, follows that model uh, very closely. Um, let's see that install time went from 16 minutes to about 6 minutes. So, I think I will pause. Be right back. Okay, uh, about a minute remaining. It's coming back. Uh, it actually installs uh, pretty quickly for, for what it's doing. And Anaconda was created uh, because it's hard to get all the dependencies for all these uh, things that sit on top of uh, NumPy. Really, uh, a lot of these 
data science, number crunching type packages that are so popular these days, such as pandas, uh, sit on uh, a piece of highly optimized code written for Python uh, as, a, as a third party package called NumPy, which does all the really hard, you know, uh, uh, matrix uh, processing with number crunching, such as it were. And then all the other things with better APIs for data scientists to interact with um, use packages like SciPy and Pandas. Anyway, um, so, okay, you don't want to do any of that sign up stuff. All this actually runs locally. So after that was finished, uh, there's a very good chance. Oh, I got an icon here called Navigator. I wonder if that is from Anaconda. It very well might be. Certainly looks like it. We'll get rid of this because it seems a distraction now. Okay, and uh, we have Anaconda Navigator. Thanks for installing. Helps you to easily to start Python applications, connects you to online resources. I don't want to help improve it. Okay, and there is the one we want. It's called a Jupyter Notebook previously IPython, if you hear it referred to. So there you have your shell opening that's going to back end it. And then you've got it running here. Now, the interesting thing is this is very equivalent to uh, one of those uh, Python command lines that you could type into, but it's in a web environment that has a lot of extra features. So I'm going to do new. Ah, well, one of the interesting things is this is sensitive to where it's launched from. And I'm not sure where it really launched from, um, but I'll probably get to that in a later video. One of the things you will want to see is that when you do stuff, it actually alters... Oh, I can't move it onto that screen because that's full screen, but I want you to see what happens in this shell window as we do stuff here. So I will unmaximize that window. And then I will make it smaller just so that can peek through behind it so that you can see what's happening there. I'm going to go new, Python 3, and there you can see the request was made. And now I can do some of those equivalent things like hi equals hello world. And then I can execute that. And now I have hi sitting in memory, and I can just go like that. And so that's very much the equivalent of Hello World. But now if I wanted to do different stuff, I could do that. And then I can do uh, cell run all. And there you see your Hello World 2. And this is extremely useful in uh, developing uh, you know, code and uh, debugging it and you know, trying all sorts of interactive stuff uh, that's better than using the command line by itself. And this is depositing files on the hard drive so that you can actually uh, go and find them. I'll give it a name here, Hello World. And so there's actually a Hello World uh, sitting on the drive that has a, a JSON proprietary format, or it might be a Python object, but a JSON looking object that tracks your entire session here. Let's take a look if we can figure out where that is. That could be fun. It seems to be running, hmm, yeah, I think I'll do that in a, in a different video. Uh, I'm going to call this a success. Uh, you saw Anaconda downloaded, installed, and getting to our first Hello World in this uh, interactive, uh, we call it, a read, eval, print loop. When you look at these types of products, they are... Uh, read eval print loop products that uh, or tools that let you uh, interactively work with a language without having to like type python space file name and wait for it to go and then rely on debuggers to catch things and to jump around you have almost like the point the ability to enter into the program at any point with all those sessions really um, not sessions but state all populated in here so if I wanted to do something else with hi I could do it right here 
run it and then start to do all that kind of stuff like, I don't know, look at uh, the first uh, four characters. Yeah, and so on. So it's a pretty awesome environment. Uh, a lot more in, uh, are of um, ventures are being based on it, integrating with it, uh, GitHub integrations, uh, integrations with different uh, Python uh, runtimes, I believe like PyPy and stuff, um, so that you can uh, see how your code is going to run on uh, execution environments other than the default very popular python.exe which is what everyone uses that's downloaded from uh, python.org but there are many others and there is definitely a need to uh, sort of get inside and uh, really get a feel for what like that code uh, feels like executing and uh, this is a great way to do it you can also uh, save and checkpoints that you can almost go in at any point and see how your code looked and track the development of a project from birth to completion uh, and have it so that you can go in and uh, analyze it and share it with other people and always have a great snapshot of the state of your application over time which sounds a lot like github and there are certain overlaps and one of my next steps is to get the github uh, methodology and the uh, Jupyter Notebook methodology to live together well because I don't want to choose one or the other uh, but they both have subtle advantages and uh, disadvantages like GitHub lets you go uh, social with it out of the starting gate. Uh, Jupyter Notebook has that but it's a uh, um, probably a highly configured product to get all those collaborative features um, and it's more set up for a classroom environment than it is, you know, global free and open source uh, sharing. And, uh, uh, you know, Jupyter Notebook has the advantage of actually being able to run the code. It's a code execution environment where GitHub is mostly just the revision uh, control system. So anyway, uh, that's me getting back to my talking head videos, uh, giving you a little heads up of what the uh, Python 3 development of Pipulate is going to uh, look like in addition to continuing to use uh, Vim. So thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon and don't forget to subscribe.